Let's talk about the CJ's 100 days in office. And Chief, Martha, uh, Chief Justice Martha Kome says she wants to be remembered as a Chief Justice who focused on enlightening Kenyans about their rights, showing them how to resolve cases without necessarily going to court and enhancing their access to justice. Justice Kome also wants to make sure all courts are digitized before she calls it a day. She says her predecessor, William Mutunga, and Justice David Maraga did the wiring for the justice system. She's now pledging into place, actually plugging it into place, and I want us to talk about the CJ. She has been in office for 100 days so far. What do legal minds make of a role at the helm of the judiciary? So let me bring in Dan Kanokach, a lawyer, into this conversation. Not a new face here on KTN News Centre. Wakili, good morning, and thank you so much for joining us here on a KTN News Centre. Good morning, good morning to you. Thank you for having me. 100 days for Martha Coleman. Listening to her talk, she's saying so far since she, she came into office, uh, several cases, so many cases have been filed. But apart from that, let's begin this conversation with the fact that she got into office with a lot of uh, bad blood being, ex being witnessed between the executive and the judiciary. Uh, it, it is uh, actually true that she got into office in, a, uh, in a very unique times and circumstances, bearing in mind that her predecessor, uh, Emeritus uh, uh, Justice Maraga, had had uh, a very bad relationship with the executive and uh, the presidency uh, for that matter. To the, a large extent, it affected the judiciary and the partakers of the judicial services in a very big way. Uh, I've, I've, the key insight, and you saw it in um, all the interviews that were done in terms of uh, who was to replace Justice Maraga, was how he, what would someone do to unclog the issues that are there, the fact that there are judges, the 40, 41 judges who had not been uh, sworn into office. And it already meant that at that particular point, even the Court of Appeal was not sitting in all other jurisdictions save for Nairobi. So there was a very, very big problem. And I think key among her roles was to try and uh, tell that particular uh, hard stance that was there. And she indicated clearly even in her interviews that she believes that she's capable of unthrowing that, something that she believes uh, eluded Justice Maraga for quite a long time in his tenure, but more importantly, she believed upon throwing that relation, uh, that particular ice, it will then lead to a solution to, it will be a panacea to most of the issues that had been, de been deviling the judiciary in relation to the relationship with the executive. But then, but then, uh, but then, Wakil, we're not only talking about that bad relationship, 100 days of the CJ in, the, in office, so she comes in, she gets already, there is a strained, you know, relationship between the judiciary and the executive. But then also within these 100 days, um, we're also seeing that she w she's become very stern, you know, almost looking like taking the sort of leadership style of uh, her predecessor, that is David Maraga. When she wrote that uh, stern warning letter to Parliament on how they summon judicial officers to appear before the committee. Uh, that, that may be so, but uh, most uh, of partakers and, uh, of, 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 of the judicial services and mostly lawyers, there's been criticism that she's been blowing hot and cold. The, the indication is that the moment that uh, the judiciary was under direct attack, when judges were actually arrested, it was a direct attack at the heart of the judiciary. They, they, it, it was expected that her reaction should have been a bit more tough than the reaction that she gave in terms of a letter, in terms of a, a, a warning, in terms of which came in the form of like a commentary. It, it was expected that when the judiciary is under attack, the chief justice as the head uh, on the president of the Supreme Court ought to have come out and viciously defended that uh, but in, in a way, that is what people have, have been expecting. But I think the governance style of the Chief Justice is she's, um, uh, she's pro uh, a, a, a policy where you actually talk, you actually uh, negotiate, you actually mediate. To a large extent, she has come out and indicated that 
through those particular uh, fronts that she's doing, which are not uh, in, in, ex in the expectation of what everyone would have expected, her coming out to fight and to show uh, her powers, uh, for the lack of a better word, she has decided to actually confront these people in, in the boardrooms. Mm -hmm. And you can see the first issue is the letter that she indicated she wrote to the president. She indicated that it bore fruits, which are the fruit Justice Maraga had been so, asking for. So Akili, from where you sit, how would you describe the Chief Justice compared to you know, her predecessor? predecessors. One, we had Willie Mutunga, who's an outsider, who's not an insider of the court, as much as was an advocate, but he never served at the court as a judge. Then we had an insider, uh, the immediate former Chief Justice David Maraga. Then again, we have another insider, who is Ma Chief Justice Martha Kome. And when you look at the leadership style of the predecessors, how would you describe Justice Martha Kome within these 100 days in office? Martha Kome's leadership style can be described uh, compared, compared to especially Justice Maraga's uh, leadership style as non-confrontational. She's really, really avoiding a direct confrontation, and she believes that that will still bear results as opposed to uh, the confrontational uh, manner in which her predecessor uh, was uh, undertaking uh, or dealing with the issues. And in real sense, the, as we talk about the 100 days, you actually find merit and, and, and it's justified in terms of her leadership style because you have a lot of things to count. I was telling you that first, uh, the judges were now sworn in, mm -hmm. something that uh, did not happen for quite a long time. The judiciary has its own independent police force now, which is guarding the judiciary and, 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 and the judges situate in the, in, in the judiciary. They are now dealing with the issues of funding. She's actually even indicated that even the issue about the attack that happened, there's now a formula that now they are, she's actually at, at, at high stakes in terms of uh, establishing how you can actually go uh, and arrest a judge. If right. indeed you think that the judge has committed any criminal offense. All right. So now within these 100 days, you know, when you, when you, had, when you had her talk, she's talking about, uh, you know, wanting to be remembered as a chief justice who focused on enlightening Kenyans on matters of justice and just showing them how to resolve cases without having to go to the court. She's talking about building more um, uh, courts in uh, different counties. She's talking about building a judiciary training institute in Gong. All this will require finances yet we are seeing during the budgetary allocation for the financial year 2021 2022 judiciary never got the budget that they wanted so how will she achieve this remember the judicial the budget making process is a very lengthy cycle so that by the time she was actually taking office in may 2021 this cycle had already commenced. And remember, there was already bad blood between parliament, between the executive and the judiciary. But at this particular point, you are seeing that she's already saying that I'm able to achieve this. And she believes that by in the next budget cycle, this will actually be uh, accommodated. Indeed, in her inaugural address, she said that these are the hallmarks of my uh, of my uh, my governance structure or my time at the helm and you can actually see as we are speaking there's a small claims court which is now functional many cases are actually being handled in record time and you know most of these cases that bedevil the court are just small claims which can be handled without a lot of uh, uh, with, without a lot of bureaucracies that come with the court system you've mm -hmm. seen mediation is one of her hallmark and she's actually doing a lot in terms of mediation and to a large extent maybe it's time that we ought to give her a chance to so that we, we because in the first 100 days have her, her, her method of dealing with these issues has already borne fruits. And I believe it's, it only behoves us to support her more uh, and see whether this new style of leadership will actually be the panacea to the problems that may have been, been bedeviled us. Because we've seen so, confrontational um, uh, style of leadership uh -huh. did not achieve much. In, right. the, in, in the region of our So will she, will she be able to achieve that digitization of court um, uh, records, because that is the same thing that also her predecessor talked about, David Maraga, former Chief Justice David Maraga, during the interviews before he was confirmed and he was working on it. It's the same thing. 
that uh, Willie Mutunga, former Chief Justice, also talked about and was working on. And it's the same thing now again we are seeing Martha Kome focusing on. Are we likely to see this being achieved finally? Indeed, uh, Justice Mutunga, retired Chief Justice Mutunga and retired Chief Justice Maraga were on point because that's one of the main issues that bedevil the judiciary and the, uh, the deliverance of justice. However, the, for you to achieve this, you need financial support. Unfortunately, all of them, the predecessors, the two predecessors have been indicating that we have not gotten that financial support for one reason or another. But we can see that in her leadership style, at least she's now been unclogging these particular uh, financial taps which were dry. I can see that she's even spoken to the uh, with Google, and they are uh, uh, they are they, they have committed to supporting and giving the judiciary 100 million for just this particular purpose. So she's even reaching out outside the traditional norms in terms of provision of financing mm -hmm. from the exchequer. So right. all these new inventions that she's coming up with will actually, and I believe will go a very long way in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in uh, bringing in a new down for the judiciary, mm -hmm. separate from what her predecessors had done. All right, right. And as we bring this conversation to an end, you know, looking at Martha Comer's, um uh, decision, mm -hmm. actually plan, is to have all cases uh, before the magistrate courts uh, cleared um, uh, by within three years. And I remember during Maraga's time, if I'm not wrong, you may correct me, Wakili, he wanted the cases at the magistrate court cleared within five years. Then again, here now we are seeing that's a difference of tears. Martha Kome talking about three, uh, former chief justice was talking about five. And the reason I'm asking you this question, it's because, yes, she's talking about clear all cases at the magistrate court within three years. And we are seeing more cases being filed by Kenyans at the magistrate courts during her tenure as a way of probably Kenyans showing that they trust her, trust her leadership. Indeed, even in uh, one of uh, what Martha, Martha Kome indicates is uh, demonstrates that Kenyans have confidence in her, is that she says many cases are now being filed uh, during her, her regime. That already indicates that there will be a problem. Even if you, you say, and many have said that the, they will want cases to be cleared within a certain period of time. It is even in, 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 in the civil procedure rules in terms of the period within which judgments rulings ought to be, in, to, to be read or delivered. But it all comes back, to, it, it becomes wishful thinking because it also goes back to other elements which will, will, will um, indicate or complement this particular result. One is the manpower that needs to be there. Martha Kome has already stated, and it was stated even by a predecessor, there's a major shortfall in terms of judicial staff, mm -hmm. both the support staff and the uh, judges and magistrates. If cases are already being filed, we already have a backlog that has not been, we are not close to even thinking about clearing. So with the numerous cases coming in and with the Kenyans being so litigious, it is good to have that as a, as a, as a, a, an, as a vision and ambition, but you need also uh, the infrastructure which will support that. That right. infrastructure, with, without that infrastructure, you, that issue will just be wishful thinking. But if you talk about the infrastructural aspects that will support that, including budgeting, financing, human resource, mediation, and such, without dealing with those ones, will it will just be a vicious cycle. The next CJ will come, and again, it will be the same song, the same chorus. But if you have people, uh, both the executive, parliament, and the judiciary working towards these infrastructural issues, I think it's something that can be achieved. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Dan Kanokach, a lawyer, just talking to us about the 100 days. Um, you know, the CJ is 100 days in office, and just, you know, uh, from what I'm getting, Wakili, is that Kenyans need to be patient with uh, Chief Justice Martha Kome and give her time, you know, to unpackage the plans that he has for the country. But for Martha Kome, she says she wants Kenyans to remember her as a person who ensured that they got justice within time and also some cases were sorted out out of the court. Thank you so much once again, Wakili, for joining us here on KTN News Center this morning. Taking us to a fast commercial break, I'll be right back with more news making the headlines.